Trotsky and several other Soviet figures promoted the idea that Stalin was a mediocrity. This gained widespread acceptance outside the Soviet Union during his lifetime but was misleading. According to biographer Montefiore, it is clear from hostile and friendly witnesses alike that Stalin was always exceptional, even from childhood. Stalin had a complex mind, great self-control, and an excellent memory. He was a hard worker, and displayed a keen desire to learn, when in power, he scrutinized many details of Soviet life, from film scripts to architectural plans and military hardware. According to Volkogonov, Stalin's private life and working life were one and the same, he did not take days off from political activities. Stalin could play different roles to different audiences, and was adept at deception, often deceiving others as to his true motives and aims. Several historians have seen it as appropriate to follow Lazar Kaganovich's description of there being several Stalins as a means of understanding his multifaceted personality. He was a good organizer, with a strategic mind, and judged others according to their inner strength, practicality, and cleverness. He acknowledged that he could be rude and insulting, but he rarely raised his voice in anger, as his health deteriorated in later life he became increasingly unpredictable and bad-tempered. Despite his tough-talking attitude, he could be very charming, when relaxed, he cracked jokes and mimicked others. Montefiore suggested that this charm was the foundation of Stalin's power in the party. Stalin was ruthless, temperamentally cruel, and had a propensity for violence high even among the Bolsheviks. He lacked compassion, something Volkogonov suggested might have been accentuated by his many years in prison and exile, although he was capable of acts of kindness to strangers, even amid the Great Terror. He was capable of self-righteous indignation, and was resentful, and vindictive, holding on to grudges for many years. By the 1920s, he was also suspicious and conspiratorial, prone to believing that people were plotting against him and that there were vast international conspiracies behind acts of dissent. He never attended torture sessions or executions, although service thought Stalin derived deep satisfaction from degrading and humiliating people and enjoyed keeping even close associates in a state of unrelieved fear. Montefiore thought Stalin's brutality marked him out as a natural extremist. 798, service suggested he had tendencies toward a paranoid and sociopathic personality disorder. According to historian Jeffrey Roberts, Stalin wasn't a psychopath. He was instead an emotionally intelligent and feeling intellectual. Other historians linked his brutality not to any personality trait but to his unwavering commitment to the survival of the Soviet Union and the international Marxist-Leninist cause. Keenly interested in the arts, Stalin admired artistic talent. He protected several Soviet writers from arrest and prosecution, such as Mikhail Bulgakov, even when their work was labeled harmful to his regime. He enjoyed listening to classical music, owning around 2,700 records, and frequently attending the Bolshoi Theater during the 1930s and 1940s. His taste in music and theater was conservative, favoring classical drama, opera, and ballet over what he dismissed as experimental formalism. He also favored classical forms and the visual arts, disliking avant-garde styles like Cubism and Futurism. He was a voracious reader, with having a personal library of over 20,000 books. Little of this was fiction, although he could cite passages from Alexander Pushkin, Nikolai Nekrasov, and Walt Whitman by heart. Stalin's favorite subject was history, closely followed by Marxist theory and then fiction. He favored historical studies, keeping up with debates in the study of Russian, Mesopotamian, ancient Roman, and Byzantine history. He was very interested in the reigns of Ivan the Terrible, Peter the Great and Catherine the Great. An autodidact, he claimed to read it as many as 500 pages a day, with Montefiore regarding him as an intellectual. Lenin was his favorite author but he also read, and sometimes appreciated, a great deal of writing by Leon Trotsky and other archenemies. Like all Bolshevik leaders, Stalin believed that reading could help transform not just people's ideas and consciousness, but human nature itself. Stalin also enjoyed watching films late at night at cinemas installed in the Kremlin and his dachas. He favored the Western genre, 
His favorite film was the 1938 picture Volga Volga. Stalin was a keen and accomplished billiards player, and collected watches. He also enjoyed practical jokes, for instance, he would place a tomato on the seat of Politburo members and wait for them to sit on it. 818, when at social events, he encouraged singing, as well as alcohol consumption, he hoped that others would drunkenly reveal their secrets to him. 820, as an infant, Stalin displayed a love of flowers, and later in life he became a keen gardener. His Volinsko suburb had a 20-hectare, 50-acre, park, with Stalin devoting much attention to its agricultural activities. Some have speculated that, despite his commitment to Marxism-Leninism, Stalin was a religious believer, out of there is no proof of this. In a 1927 interview with the first American trade union delegation, Stalin declared, the party cannot be neutral towards religion and does conduct anti-religious propaganda against all and every religious prejudice because it stands for science, while religious prejudices run counter to science, because all religion is something opposite to science. Cases such as recently occurred in America in which Darwinists were prosecuted in court, cannot occur here because the party carries out a policy of the general defense of science, the party cannot be neutral towards the bearers of religious prejudices, towards the reactionary clergy who poison the minds of the toiling masses. Have we suppressed the reactionary clergy? Yes, we have. The unfortunate thing is that it has not been completely liquidated. On another occasion, when the American journalist Walter Durante asked him whether he believed in luck, Stalin banged his fist on the desk and said, What do you think I am, an old Georgian granny to believe in gods and devils? I'm a Bolshevik and believe in none of that nonsense. However, according to one of Stalin's bodyguards, Yuri Soloviev, Stalin was not an atheist, he believed in nature created by the Almighty. He observed that Stalin addressed people with phrases such as well with God, noting a particular instance where, during a wartime speech, Stalin used the phrase brothers and sisters, a phrase used by priests. Soloviev also claimed that Stalin had an icon of Our Lady of Kazan in his office, and that he often prayed in the Kremlin. According to an article from the New York Times concerning the Soviet Union's ties with the Levant, he told a Greek Orthodox ecclesiastic that he did believe in God and that he disapproved of anti-religious propaganda, although he questioned the existence of an afterlife. In another article from Political Theology Network, Marxist philosopher and scholar Roland Bohr writes that Stalin annotated the religious works in his library, and memorized long passages from the Bible. He also refused to include anti-religious works, calling them anti-religious waste paper. He also focuses on Stalin's rehabilitation of the Church during World War II, noting, these developments are far more complex than the common argument that a morally bankrupt government sought to harness the church's influence to counter the Nazis. 828, Stalin once confided to the British ambassador Archibald Clark Kerr that he believed in God in his own way, though Kerr commented that he had his tongue in his cheek when he said so. Stalin publicly condemned anti-Semitism, although he was repeatedly accused of it. People who knew him, such as Khrushchev, suggested he long harbored negative sentiments toward Jews, and it has been argued that anti-Semitic trends in his policies were further fueled by Stalin's struggle against Trotsky. After Stalin's death, Khrushchev claimed that Stalin encouraged him to incite anti-Semitism in Ukraine, allegedly telling him that the good workers at the factory should be given clubs so they can beat the hell out of those Jews. In 1946, Stalin allegedly said privately that every Jew is a potential spy. Conquests stated that although Stalin had Jewish associates, he promoted anti Semitism. Service cautioned that there was no irrefutable evidence of anti Semitism in Stalin's published work, although his private statements and public actions were undeniably reminiscent of crude antagonism towards Jews. He added that throughout Stalin's lifetime, the Georgian would be the friend associate or leader of countless individual Jews. Stalin also had Jewish in-laws and grandchildren. Additionally, according to Beria, Stalin had affairs with several Jewish women.